morning, everyone. This is Diane Murray at Southern Art Gallery, and today I thought we would go over our basic supplies for our Watercolor 101 class, which I will be teaching in the fall. I thought um, you guys on YouTube might find this interesting if you're new to watercolor, so here we go. Uh, first thing you will need is a color chart. And if you're not familiar with your colors and you don't know a lot about color mixing, these things are invaluable. And uh, the, the key to success in mixing is right here in one of these color charts. So I recommend everybody gets one of those. The obvious things you need, well, let's start. You need a palette, okay? This is a, a palette that I use to teach and I find that it's um, very, very helpful for traveling because this is made by um, Mission Magello. It's a little folding palette. It has a seal around it so that you can transport this easily, protect your paints, and so this would be the palette I would suggest if you're taking an art class and you need to transport your paints. And while we're looking at this, we'll go ahead and tell you the basic nine, limited nine color palette that I recommend for my students. And as you can see on here, that would, uh, we do a split primary um, palette with two reds, two yellows, and two blues. Our reds are quinacridone magenta, pyrrole red, and then we have burnt sienna. We have quinacridone gold. Our yellows are new gamboge or nickel azo, lemon yellow. The only green on the palette is perlene green. The blues are thalo blue and ultramarine, which are our two blues. And that's our basic palette, which we start with. And these, these are 18 other colors that um, we'll eventually progress to. But to start out, I think you're, um, you can start out with a, a limited palette, and it'll do you for a good long time. You need painter's tape or masking tape. I recommend a obviously a pencil and an eraser and either a, a soft pencil either an hb or a 2b pencil this is a really these white erasers are really the best i've found i also use kneaded erasers they come in very handy and these things are besides they're just great stress reducers um, this is a this is masking fluid you don't need to start out with masking fluid, but eventually you're probably gonna to wanna to get some. Uh, PBO, I like PBO because it's thin and it's colored. This is a cement pickup. This picks up your masking fluid off your paper safely. You're gonna need a water container. And you know, for years I used, let me show you what I use. Just a simple glass jar that's flat on the bottom so that it doesn't tip over and uh, it works great and even you can have two of those one for clean water one for not so clean water but recently i discovered this little bucket <clears throat> and jerry sells these online this is also by uh, magello and it is the most wonderful bucket because there's a place for your um your brushes and it has three separate water wells, so you can constantly be using clean water without having to constantly get up and change your water. So I have really found that useful. Okay, you're gonna need paper. I don't generally paint a lot on paper, but we'll be painting on blocks if when we paint on paper. This is just a little block as an example. I would recommend Arsh blocks. I don't presently have one in front of me, but basically it comes like this. This is a Canson, and this is not a bad paper. Um, I, I think it would be better with Arsh though, but anyway, they come in these gummed blocks so that you don't have to get into um, stretching your watercolor paper, which I do not do. 
and you're going to need also I recommend that everyone gets a um, watercolor journal and this is a little inexpensive one it's called a vision it's by Strathmore and it's a great place for keeping a record of all your color mixes new paints that you're trying things you're learning um, it's just um, mixing your different colors it's just they're invaluable for helping you when you if you're looking for color to go back and find a particular color and how you mix that color just saves you a tremendous amount of time so I suggest that um, there are many different kinds of palettes if you don't aren't taking a class and you're just at home um, porcelain palettes are probably the best they're heavy though and they're fairly expensive but this cute little porcelain palette it's really cute you can also get lots of different plastic palettes this is my favorite workhorse palette it's a, a quiller palette and the reason I like this is because it is shaped like the color wheel and I do label my colors as you can see because regardless of how long you've been doing this it's very easy to get to confuse your colors this is another one of my palettes this is a woods palette these all come with uh, protective lids which is really important for keeping your watercolors clean I showed you the Magello palette I have several other palettes they are not currently up here though so we'll look at those later you need a spray bottle and it can be doesn't have to be a fancy spray bottle it can be any spray bottle that you as long as it's clean that you use very important the other thing I use um, I don't dip into my water as much for clean water I tend to use these little spray bottles just for dropping water in my palette or to re you know to refresh my paints okay let's talk about brushes now I did a separate video on all my brushes, so um, if you search my playlist, you'll be able to find that. But as far as brushes go, you're gonna need some kind of a wash brush to put large amounts of water on your paper to begin with. This, uh, I don't use this one a lot, but this is a Winsor Newton, and they're very soft. Your wash brushes need to be very soft. A lot of people use uh, hockey brushes. I don't like them because they're made of goat hair and they shed. But I found this little uh, guy, he's a filbert, and I found him at Hobby Lobby. And he was very inexpensive. He's a mural brush and he's very soft. He's a number 50, so he works well. Or you can just get, if you happen to have a large one, I've had this for years. This is a Da Vinci Cosmo Top number 30 and I, this is what I usually lay my washes down with right here you're gonna need a inexpensive little brush to mix your paints you don't want to mix your paints with your good brushes because it ruins them so I always use this it's just a little Hobby Lobby uh, 3 8 inch doesn't matter the size as long as it will mix paint you're gonna need a small brush this is a number three this is a Winsor Newton a two or a three would be fine. Just something that you can do detail with. A liner brush would be fine. If you'd rather have one of those. And they look kind of like this. They come in very handy. This one is a Robert Simmons. You need a number four or a number six. This is a very, this, this wasn't inexpensive. This was inexpensive. This is a, um, Creative Mark. This is their Mimic Kalinsky, which is uh, just a synthetic that's supposed to mimic Sable. Sable is so is the best. Everybody thinks the best um, hair to to uh, paint with. However, it's made from the animal, from the Sable animal. And if you prefer not to purchase brushes that are uh, that come from the animal trade. You can find lots of good synthetic brushes like this um, Escoda Versatile, which is synthetic. This is a number 12. So you're gonna need a 10 or a 12. This is a silver brush. Very, a uh, number 10. Now this has, this is synthetic, but it does have some squirrel mixed in with it. 
or you can find just a really inexpensive synthetic brush and I found these at Hobby Lobby and this actually works quite well. So those are the basic brushes you need. I think that is everything you need to get started. Um, I th the other thing I, I paint on is these little canvas boards that, I, that are very inexpensive. They're watercolor boards and um, I use those a lot and we'll be using those in class. So um, that would be good to have to, to experiment on those. And I think that's basically everything. So if I think of anything else on down the road, I will add it. And uh, we will continue to explore watercolor and our beginning watercolor class. And then we'll be working on our advanced classes. So please stay with us and uh, just watch for updates. And please subscribe. Thanks a lot.